All right, guys, welcome back to Gigabyte's Motherboards and Bricks channel. My name is Leon Chen, and today we have a very special guest with us. This is Bryn Pilney from Intel's storage team here to talk to us about the new NVMe drives that you guys might have seen on the market. Yeah, so uh, earlier in 2015, we came out with the 750 series, which we believe fundamentally changed uh, storage for um, normal end users, DIY users. So basically the 750 series uses a new technology called non-volatile memory express that runs off of PCI express, which I think a lot of people are used to, uh, that completely changes the level of performance you can expect from an SSD. So Bryn, uh, what, um, I mean this has been something that's revolution to the PC market. What's the changes that this might come compared to what we see right now with our traditional SSD drives? Sure, so your highest performance SATA SSD that you have in the market today is capable of a theoretical limit of about 600 megabytes per second for sequential transfers. Um, just as a benchmark to kind of give you an idea of how much additional performance you can get from the 750 series, we see that number somewhere around 2400 megabytes a second for the same sequential transfer. So that's basically four times faster than what we usually see. That's kind of the sound bite that we give is about four mm -hmm. times faster than your best SATA drive. And, and so just by changing this drive alone, we're able to get increased performance four times, or does that also directly affect um, our graphics GPU as well as our CPU? Do we need to upgrade anything else, or this part alone will improve the whole system? So, uh, I mean, just the way that it works, being PCI Express, uh, it's, it's capable for, you know, we're saying validated for Z97 systems and beyond. Um, it definitely depends on your configuration. So if you're using Z170, uh, you can plug in direct attached to the CPU, but if you have like a multiple GPU array running in, you know, SLI or Crossfire or something like that, uh, you might be using some of the same PCIe lanes. That being said, um, if you have X99 where you have additional lanes off the CPU, it might not impact those same cards. Um, or you can use something like a U.2 drive, which looks very similar to your standard uh, SATA drive. It's a little bit thicker, I don't know if you can tell. But it is actually also a PCI Express drive, so it's not a SATA drive. It uses a new technology called U.2, which is a cabled PCI Express solution. So let's, let's show them the connector. So you guys can actually see right here, this is a connector for that PCIe drive. Uh, this connects directly to the drive itself, and you actually have to power it with an additional connector for the SATA power. So that's how the drive gets its power, correct? Correct. <clears throat> and then uh, we actually have a board right here, so why don't we show them how you would actually install uh, the both the adding card as well as the M.2 to U.2 directly to the board. Sure. So the adding card, I think at least, is fairly easy. Um, you would install it the same way that you would a GPU, just instead of having uh, 16 lanes of PCI Express, you only have four. So you would take it and uh, let's see here. So guys, keep in mind that every motherboard's different, so you might want to check out what motherboard you're using. Right now, today, we're showing it off on a Z170X Gaming G1. This one is able to support four PCI Express slots by eight, which means by doing this, he still has, uh, we still have an additional uh, eight, eight, eight lanes for each of these. So you can actually run SLI graphics still off of these two slots. So that's why we placed it at the very end. Again, every board is different, so check your user's manual to see the difference and how you would util utilize the PCIe lanes once you connect an adding card like this. That's good advice, especially as we move to our second form factor, which is actually U.2. Um, so U.2, right now, if you look at the included cable on the drive and you look at the connector, it has a, a very unique looking connector, which is for those four lanes of PCI Express. And this connector, Intel will include with the packaging when consumers or users buy it off of um, the their local retail store or online store, correct? Right, so it is included in the box for your 750 series 2.5 inch. Um, one thing though is, you know, if you look at, say, this board or a lot of boards that are available right now, it doesn't have that unique connector. So what you actually need to do is you need to use one of these adapters, like what Gigabyte has, um, where you can, I mean, it comes with a little plastic slot, but you plug in the U.2 cable, 
So you're directly in there, and then you would take your normal 2280 uh, size M.2, and you just plug it in. So just so you guys know, the one we're using right now, this is a 2260. This board supports up to 2280. Once you've connected that M.2, Brennan, if you would do the honors. Of actually screwing it in, sure. Yep, there you go. And we're just fumbling with the screw right now, but you'll probably get it in your first try. But once you have all <laughs> of this connected, you're able to use the 2.5 inch version of the NVMe. Right, so you just plug into your drive and then uh, it actually has the same mounting holes that you would find on a normal two and a half inch SATA or even a three and a half inch hard drive. So you would just attach the drive to your drive bin and it sits with the rest of your storage. And of course, you still need to give it that extra power boost Keep in mind guys, if you guys are using the M.2 slots, again, check your user's manual because you will be using several PCIe lanes and you might lose your SATA Express connectors or some SATA capabilities from your SATA ports out on the other side. Right, and the reason that is, is uh, on Z170, there's actually new features for NVMe drives, uh, like the ability to RAID, which I think we take for granted for something like SATA that's been around for so long, but we actually did a lot of ecosystem enabling from the Intel and also Gigabyte side to make sure that NVMe works flawlessly from an end user perspective. So for something like RAID, before when we rated traditional SSDs, we saw somewhat of a speed boost. Would we expect the same amount or same performance boost when we RAID NVMe, or would the increase be uh, minuscule because of this, the already fast speed and throughput of the drives itself? So it depends on how you do the RAID. Um, there's actually two ways that you can do RAID on a Z170 system. Um, so if you were going to do RAID on X99 or Z170 with add-in cards, assuming your add-in card slots were all directly attached to the CPU like they are on this board, you can do a direct attach RAID to the CPU. However, that means that that is not a bootable RAID volume. The benefit to that is you do actually get to see, say you're doing two drives in RAID 0, you would see that roughly 2x performance increase. Um, that being said, for a lot of people, if you have a drive that's this fast, you're going to want to be able to boot from your drive. You want your right. OS to be on your fastest SSD. So when you use the M.2 to U.2 adapters and you use multiple U.2 drives, on Z170, they actually attach to the chipset. So what that allows uh, end users to do is you can, similar to normal SATA RAID, go into your BIOS, turn on uh, RAID functionality, at which point this board supports up to two NVMe drives in RAID, and you don't get quite the 2x performance uh, as a limitation of the bandwidth that's available through the chipset, but you do get that additional capacity and you get about a 1.5 to 1.7 times performance boost if you're using two drives in RAID 0. It's good to know. So guys, all of the Gigabyte boards you guys see out in the market do support RAID. Uh, with NVMEs, it's a little bit different, especially with the U.2s, we support RAID 0 and 1. Of course, if you want to RAID your traditional SSDs, that's an option for you as well, which will support 0, 1, 5, 10 from the standard Intel spec. Um, not only that, just to keep in mind, if you guys are using X99 versus Z170, uh, remember the PCIe lanes coming from your PCH, uh, from the chipset, is actually Gen 2. So mm -hmm. we are going to run into a little bit of a uh, slower speed, but you can always choose to use the add-in card if you want. Mm -hmm. But 20 gigabits per second uh, versus the 6 gigabits per second off your standard SSD is still a speed boost, right? Right, and <laughs> one of the main reasons that Intel has actually decided to go with the U.2 standard as opposed to your normal M.2 is that, um, you know, if you look at the placement of U.2s, it's or M.2s, excuse me, they're close to your GPUs and other high-performance components. Um, Airflow needs to be very, very good if you're going to get that full level of performance from an M.2. So with the U.2, we're actually not constrained to that really, really small space, which allows us to cable our drive away from the heat uh, and then also dissipate some of that heat on a much larger heat sink. And the additional space also allows us to get larger capacities. Okay. So, um, Bryn, one of the other things, a lot of users, they choose to raid their drives because they're looking for larger capacities. Mm -hmm. um, with our current NVMEs, we know that there's a 400 gig, an 800 gig, and a 1.2 terabyte. Right. Are there plans for this to grow, or is this something that users have to continue to raid or add on or accumulate to grow that total storage space? 
So what I'll say is, from uh, a storage division perspective, we're very in tune with the community. So we're looking at what everybody wants, and we are making our roadmap decisions for the future based on what we see a desire in the market for. So if you guys are looking for higher capacities in future products, let us know, um, you know, potentially in the comments here. I know that I'll be checking. So uh, that's a great way to get a hold of us. Okay. Sure, so um, I think we've covered most of the general topics for NVMe and how we uh, install it directly onto a board, whether it through AIC, add-in card, or through the M.2 and U.2. Let's take some time to talk about uh, subjects surrounding storage and sure. how this has changed. All right, Brent, so in terms of uh, other medias revolving around storage solutions, how does the Intel storage division see the future of SAT Express? So. <clears throat> From a product perspective, we see the industry moving to much, much higher performance. Performance that you can only get by utilizing non-volatile memory express or NVMe. So what that means is for future products, uh, especially in the 700 series or, or high performance enthusiast products, we will continue to utilize NVMe similar to the 750 series. Um, unfortunately, that means that SATA Express isn't currently on our roadmap, but again, you know, listening to end users. So that's good. Uh, you guys are getting a lot of feedback from the end users and I think that's what all of you guys are interested in seeing rather than seeing technology that doesn't benefit you guys the most. So at the same time, Gigabyte has actually found a solution to how to use your SATA Express ports. For some of our boards, we've actually included, and you can actually look at some of our other unboxings and overviews, this is actually a USB 3.1 drive bay with a USB uh, Type-C connector as well as a standard A. Now this connects through your SATA Express ports, uh, through a SATA Express cable that's included with your motherboard, and all you have to do is power it with SATA power connectors. And that's one of the ways you can actually leverage these the speed from your SATA Express port. <clears throat> so just a quick tip, uh, neat fact for you guys to get a feel for if you guys aren't in interested in populating that port. So Brent, also, uh, let's just circle back. So we've talked about all the theoretical numbers. It's four times faster when we're using an NVMe compared to traditional SSDs. Mm -hmm. uh, of course, NVMe's, they have a throughput of about 32 gigabits per second, mm -hmm. and SSDs uh, through the SATA ports are only six. Mm -hmm. How does this actually help, in a real-world scenario, uh, content creators or gamers uh, by using, when they use an NVMe? Sure. So first and foremost, when looking at the future of you know what's going to be a bottleneck for storage, we see <clears throat> huge data sets, right? So with uh, uh, over the horizon there being tons of 4K content coming out, being able to have a higher bandwidth throughput on your storage device is incredibly important. Um, you know, for content creators, I think it speaks to the 4K content speaks for itself, right? Yeah. Um, on top of that, gamers. Uh, myself being one, we never want to compromise when it comes to a component. And the 750 series is your true no compromise storage device. Um, on top of both content creators and gamers though, we're looking at people doing engineering workstation. So say CAD or some sort of simulation can really benefit from uh, the storage throughput as well. Great, and, and that's something that I believe Gigabyte is, we're very focused on as well. If uh, you guys haven't seen for CES 2016, Gigabyte has actually launched a workstation or high-end desktop motherboard or solution for users that are looking to do more content creation, more designing, uh, uh, they want to have high performance for gaming or for the most part they just want a system that works for them at their level. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so that's something I feel uh, Gigabyte and Intel has been very closely aligned with and in the future just so you guys know we're gonna have some of our boards with the U.2 directly implemented on it. Yeah, Gigabyte has been an awesome ecosystem partner as we have sought to uh, drive NVMe to end users. So. Great. So you guys heard it here, guys. Uh, if you guys have any comments for Bryn, uh, anything you guys want to feedback for the NVMe's and what you guys have on thoughts, we'd love to see it in the comments below. Also, if you guys have any comments about the Gigabyte board or any videos that you guys would like to see us talk about, please be sure to leave that in the comments. Like and subscribe this video. Both of us, Bryn and myself included, we're going to check back often. And Bryn, thank you again for coming in. Thanks for having me, Leon. All right, guys, and we'll see you guys next time on Gigabyte's Motherboards and Bricks channel. Thanks for visiting.